Assalamualaikum. Dear students, today we are going to uh, uh, discuss with you uh, as we have I have promised with you before that uh, placental circulation and abnormalities of the placenta in this session. So as we have discussed before that tertiary ovarian bladder you see there are three types of bladder primary secondary tertiary tertiary occurs when there is some embryonic mesoderm grows into the coion and in men in, uh, in this sub embryonic mesoderm the embryonic vessels develops in the loose connective tissue of this and this connects the vessel to the coion and the connecting stalk so as you can see the maternal blood this this is this is the spiral artery the uterine artery this is the umbilical artery this is the spiral artery you know this is uh, what we call in urdu chakkardar and it's spiral around it's going around ab above or like this and <clears throat> these vessels they go uh, in the trophoblastic layer they erode the maternal endometrium and here <laughs> these uh, trophoblastic cells invade the terminal end of the spiral arteries here this is the terminal end when they invade it here the gases exchange occur between uh, mother and the fetal uh, uh, vasculature during the fifth, fourth and fifth month decidua forms a number of decidual septa you see this is a septa septa totally dawns as we discussed before this projects into the intervillous space you see here these are, these are the arteries these arteries has gone into this into with this space these are and here this is the connecting umbilical cord here you see, see this parallel arteries going around now the structure of a placenta as you see do two parts this is the fetal part and this is the maternal part the fetal part the fetal artery this has a umbilical vein you see this red color contains oxygen rich blood and the fetal this contains deoxygenated blood from the mother this is umbilical vein the fetal this is a contain deoxygenated blood and here in this coionic space this you know this is the myometrium and this is the actual endometrial arteries and the endometrial vein where this exchange occurs here this is the lungs of the placenta can you see <clears throat> this the same shape is the alveoli of a lung so capillary rich capillaries here they anastomosis with each other for the gases exchange occurs from the maternal and the fetal part they intermingle here in this intervillous space and here in this coionic space and here where the gases exchange takes place and, and this forms the placental septum also we call it placental barrier now here you can see two parts fetal circulation and maternal circulation the maternal circulation contains the uterine artery you see this is uterine artery it contains see the red color contains spiral inter uh, it contains the oxygenated blood and goes here and takes part in this capillary network for the gases exchange occurs through the placental barrier 
fetal cell collision. And it is also uh, from, from here, this vessel is blue vessel which contains dioxin from the fetal part. This is coming from the fetus. This is coming from the mother which contains red color. So this intermingle here in this rich artery capillary net anastomosis network where this gaseous exchange occurs. <clears throat> now, to understand this, you have to uh, understand first that how the fetal circulation occurs. Before uh, um, knowing this uh, fetal circulation, you have to know the how the uh, circulation adult works. It, so deoxygenated blood from the periphery or from the uh, peripheral parts of the body will come to the inferior vena cava into the right atrium. From the right atrium it goes into the artery into the lungs so from purified hair and then they come from the pulmonary artery veins into the uh, left atrium and from this it pump into the aorta into general circulation. This is how it is occurs in the uh, uh, adult, in adults, but in the infants, there are certain bypasses here. Three or two or three bypasses. You see, this umbilical vein contains oxygenated blood from the mother. It goes into the umbilical vein into this to the ductus venosus, you see here, this is the ductus venosus. It's not present in adult. Here it is, ductus venosus is obliterated. We call it as ligamentum venosum, but here in the fetus, it is here. It was called ductus venosus. It's going in two, uh, two ways. Here it's going to the liver and it's going into the inferior vena cava. Here, inferior vena cover contains deoxygenated blood, but here, inferior vena cover contains oxygenated blood to the right atrium here. And in this right atrium, there is foramen oval. Here, there is for no foramen oval is obliterated, but here, this patent is going from um, this uh, inferior vena cover to ventricle, and from this atrium, it goes into the left atrium. And from this, when it, uh, it goes into the ventricles, and from here it goes into this directly into ductus, uh, from uh, into the pulmonary vein, and here to the ductus arteriosus. Here, this ductus arteriosus is not present, but here it is communicated so directly open into the aorta. Instead of going into the lungs, it is going into the aorta. See here. So, in adults, there's no ductus arteriosus, but here there's a ductus arteriosus, and from this ductus arteriosus is going into this general circulation. So, very uh, important that you understand this. Now, today uh, I have mentioned in my previous lecture the placental membranes in detail, but I'm going to repeat it because it's very important that you understand this placental membranes that and these placental membranes they change in the first 20 weeks they are different and the remaining other weeks uh, uh, changes are going till the full term then other other changes will occur but in the first in the first 20 weeks there are layers they prevent the mixing of the blood of the mother and some harmful uh, substance to cross it. So, what are these? You see, early in the 20th week gestation, four layers are there. The endothelial lining of the capillary membranes, the first layer that they have to cross, then there's a connected tissue in which this capillary is lying. Then there's a satyrotrophoblast. 
this cerebrophoblast shell. Then this syncytio trophoblast, you see, syncytio trophoblast. But after 20 weeks, the cytotrophoblast degenerates. So what happened that permeability increases because this layer has gone after 20 weeks. Now towards the end of the pregnancy, towards the full time, yani, there's a fibroid exudes, as you see, fibrinous. These are protein clogging clogs, the proteinaceous clogs, which form on the surface of the villi, they decrease the permeability. So this is another placental barrier. This is near the full term, which is about to be uh, 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 pasturated. So now there is three layers, the fibroid material, the syncytiotrophoblast, and the endothelial lining. So near the full term, it differs from the 20 week gestation. Now the function of the placenta. You see, uh, because fet as you see in the circulation, fetus lungs are, uh, fetus is not taking the respiration as normal till it is born. So exchange has to occur through this Fetal placental circulation. So, uh, I've told you the gases exchange occurs at that level, in the capillary membranes and like this. And there's exchange of nutrients, electrolytes also through this. Excretion of the waste products, which so acts as the kidney also. And there's a transmission of maternal antibodies, whatever the, uh, uh, the mother has uh, uh, contracted any disease, there will be antibodies produced against the disease. That antibodies will also pass to this uh, fetal membrane, to the fetus to become beneficial to it. Hormone production, very important. Progesterone, it maintains the corpositive in early part of pregnancy, so prevents other evolutions and so other evolution not takes place and prevent menses during pregnancy. So very important part. And towards the end of the pregnancy, estrogenic hormones are produced, which are actually called, uh, um, uh, softening of, of the uterine ligament. So the uh, child is born easily to this pelvic cavity, uh, goes through the pelvic cavity easily. Help in the delivery. So it's help, uh, helping them. It, and it prevents not all of the organisms. Some of the organism can cross. Uh, namely, we can ask you in the uh, examination also, name some organisms can cross. So there's a rabilla, coxeski, German measles, polymeratus. They can cross and cause a congen congenital malformations, which can uh, cause uh, heart problems or uh, tubal defects, uh, or just, so, so many problems it can cause. So there are certain drugs. If, uh, a mother will take uh, something for the pain or any uh, infections, or uh, certain drugs can cross and ca cause the serious damage to the patient. So it is uh, uh, to the mother. So it is also uh, it cannot. So it cannot. It is not a complete barrier. Certain things can cross and cause harm. Now the abnormalities of the placenta. <clears throat> As you know, the normal side of implantation is the upper uterine segment, not lower uterine segment. This is lower. Upper uterine segment and post posterior lateral wall of this, not anterior, not this one. The posterior median portion of the uterine cavity. But here, what is happening? Placenta previa. It has uh, few uh, shapes. It will take a few shapes. What happened? That this, uh, instead of uh, implanting here, this fertilization takes place at the margin. And it has, you see, it has involved the cervix, some part of the cervix also. This is the cervix, and it is gone, uh, it's the margin, to, uh, it is attached to the margins, and it has crossed the cervix also. 
this is another one. This is a paratalysis. It has, it is attached to the margins, but it has spared the cervix. So cervix is open here, but it is attached to the parietes. But another, which is dangerous one, it, uh, it has, you see, one, one wall to another wall, and it has closed down the cervix. So we call it centralis, centrally placed. What is caused? It causes severe antipartum hemorrhage, meaning that when the child is still in the mother womb and not full term, it can cause the bleeding during the pregnancy. These are the three types of the placenta previa. So you see here, previa. It is completely obliterating the cervix. Abnormal penetration into the uterus. This is an another type. You see, uh, the coyon uh, usually uh, invade this endometrial layer, and uh, so if they have crossed this layer and it has gone deep into the myometrium, uh, accreta, it causes the abnormal adhesions between the coyon villa and the uterine wall. So it is difficult to detach during the uh, delivery it will uh, be causing some bleeding and there is a more dangerous form another dangerous form you see it has gone all the way from the myometrium till the perimetrium this is the perimetrium here this perimetrium this is endometrium and this is so it has gone to the uh, endometrium, it has uh, gone till the perimetrium, all the way. What happened that this, when the, uh, during delivery, this cannot be uh, separated from this and cause severe postpartum, postpartum meaning during the delivery. It's very dangerous. Few can survive. Then there is a, abnormal attachment of the umbilical cord. We call it, one is velamentous attachment. In this one, the cord does not reach the placenta. You see here, this is the placenta, and it is not, it is born into this, but what it is only attached to this, amniotic membranes, you see, amniotic membranes. So what happened that this can be easily torn away from here. Because very feeble here, feeble attachment here. So you can, uh, uh, any uh, jerks or this will turn away from this and cause the, and then the other one, battle do placenta, the margins. Instead of here, sides, it has attached to the margins. It is another feeble type, it can be torn. So marginal attachment of the cord, we call it battle do placenta. There are another double placenta, bilobe, triple placenta, you can multiple cotyledons dons are involved, uh, the bilobe, horseshoe placenta. So it, uh, it's all uh, for today, and uh, I, hope, uh, of, uh, I hope that it is, uh, you found it interesting, and um, uh, uh, it has uh, given you some insight into this uh, topic. Thank you very much.